Oh god, I can't look over the water. <laughs> That's so stupid! This video brought to you by Ren. Earlier this year, we had a mega airplane crash. Well, that was actually a community build with all these kids. And they actually wanted my drone motors. And you know what I told them? No! You cannot have the motors. The reason why is because I'm going to put them on a flying contraption. This flying contraption that we should probably show you how I built. Check it out, 50 of my greatest fans. <laughs> I have to put this on. Oh, it's so lightweight. Remember, it's not how the firmware performs, it's how cool it looks. This looks so stupid. <laughs> We're gonna have to go to the field and test this because when you run with a paramotor, you inflate it above your head and those strings come up, but the strings are laying on the ground beforehand. Now I have to see if those strings are gonna hit this cage and get tangled up in my propellers or break the cage or something. So I might need to put guide rods on them or it might not because that might be far enough that I think I might be able to do this. Let's go to the field because there's only one way to check this out. So the next logical step is to see if I can get the wing to do the same thing and you know, step over my head, because if I know if you can do that, if I had a little bit of power, I'd fly. It's not done yet, but I want to test it today. I'm just gonna try to run for it and see what happens to the lines. We're golden, I think I can fly this. It looks like the strings come up just fine. It's such a short cage, even with my tiny little wingspan. With that out of the way and the lines coming out successfully, it's time to add the batteries and the RC controller to control all these motors. And who best to test this out than Tucker Gott, the Risky Biscuits guy himself, and his friend Judson. So we're gonna take these batteries on because they don't have time to build the proper battery mounts. Don't worry, I'm going first. <laughs> okay. I just have to not butt land. They're here for just a day, so I'm gonna get this thing done. Then we're gonna head to the airfield for a very, very brief, very fast, Maiden flight. Boy, I'm, I'm really, really glad right now that this is not essential to the safety of this machine. And what I mean by that is that this whole paramotor propeller thing could actually fall off or catch on fire, and I would actually be fine because I didn't build the wing and I didn't build the harness. Those are two factory bought things. Well, so we're totally fine. You... Oh, that's so loud. It does push. <laughs> that's a horrible sound. <laughs> It, it is it's very loud. A no. scary sound. <laughs> this is not the proper controller, but it's all I had right now. And that is an e-foil controller. And I'm going to tape that thing to my arm because we have no proper way of, you know, securing that thing to the paramotor. So it's just wireless. Let's do the first test flight of the world's jankiest, sketchiest electric paramotor. I've never rushed a maiden this bad for any of my flying contraptions, but I feel pretty good about this one. Uh, don't try this at home. Definitely, definitely don't do any of this at home. This is bad. This is not a good example. But I had some pro pilots here, Tucker Gott and Judson, which are both trained paramotor people that super know what they're doing, so I'm totally fine doing this in front of them. And of course, I'm going to blow my first launch. Tucker's giving me some quick pointers because I've only done a handful of launches up to now. This is like probably my 20th flight. And of course, it's going to be one of my homemade contraptions.
takes a little more power than I thought it would, so I was just kind of scared to really peg it because I'm not really quite sure. I want to I want to check the temperatures. Oh god, I can't look over the throttle. Oh, oh it's just like barely warm. Okay, with that flat out of the way, it is now time to let Tucker and Judson try to fly this thing. The prop. The prop, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, great. Oh god, look at this one. Oh. Uh, let's fix that with some duct tape real yeah. fast, and then we'll go again. Tucker weighs, I think he weighs like 155, maybe 160. Okay. <laughs> He's definitely heavier than I am. I weigh a buck 35, and Judson's definitely the lightest out of all of us. This is the first aviation contraption that I ever made that anyone else has flown. But if you're gonna <laughs> be a more experienced pilot such as Tucker got, we should go check out here in the YouTube link below. <laughs> How's it feel letting like someone else fly your craft? I didn't make the harness in the wing, so I'm, I, I'm feel pretty okay about Someone this. Someone else is liable for that part. Yeah, can't hurt yourself too bad, I don't think. Just don't put your hands in the propellers. <laughs> I can't drop it. We'll see how she works. Tucker barely makes it across the runway. Oh, oh he, yeah, he, he just runs and skedaddles down the whole thing. Oh, he's going for it. It maybe needs a little bit more power. Also, I should probably note that only 49 of the motors are currently running for all these tests. Uh, an ESC blew up, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, he's going to land, I think. So I need to add more motors to it. It's not quite enough for your average pilot. I'm a little bit of a lightweight, so. So it does fly, but I expected a little bit more out of it, though, to be honest. Like, I expected a little bit more whoosh, but it's just barely enough. I have, like, a detonator on my hand. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's a weird feeling. And Judson, surprisingly, he makes it out the furthest. He, he actually does a full lap. That is the most bizarre sound ever. And then the batteries die and the speed controllers start to reinitialize. <laughs> oh, it died. That had to be one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had flying. <laughs> With Tucker and Judson both gone on their trip, it's not time to actually put this pair of motor together for what I want to do. I need to put the battery compartments on and some bigger motors to get a little more thrust because I want to fly with a lower power setting. So let's go ahead and go down to Georgia. The reason I'm going down to Georgia is because I actually trained with One Up Adventures. They were the people that taught me how to fly pair motors and I wanted to get their reactions to this flying machine. It's not often that you send your student off to fly and they return with their own flying contraption that's hot glue, duct tape, and 3D printed together. So the first launch, I have these new motors on top, and Kyle is up. He was one of the people that taught me how to fly, and he's going to try to launch this thing with the new drone rotors on top. Come on! The thing is, I actually meant to attach these ducts onto it, but my 3D printer had a lot of problems and wouldn't really quite make these, so I ran out of time and, well, we don't worry about the ducts right now. And uh, after a few launches, we figured out this wasn't quite working and we just took the cage off and we just used the normal 50 drone motors. One thing that totally changed and threw everything off was I added a new remote to this. I had the boat controller earlier and that puts out enough signals to go from zero to full throttle. Basically it was calibrated for zero to 100% throttle. This new throttle I put on, however, did not do that. It wasn't exactly calibrated for this. So I sent Kyle and Justin across the field maybe 70% power, and they got the work out of their lives. The next day, I figured all of this out. Yes, yes, I did indeed. We calibrated for full power, and of course it flew just fine now. In the next attempt, Kyle was actually able to fly. How does it feel to fly the longest time in the air with my homemade death trap? <sighs> Actually, once you're in the air, it was pretty awesome. The little bit of wind helped. I was just surprised that I was able to go back downwind. Yeah, that was awesome. And then turn around, have some fun. It's fine. If you run fast enough, once you're in the air, it's fine. You'll just land anyway. So that was a ton of fun. I love, you know, getting people to fly this thing because boy, is this thing something different. It's definitely like the lightest pair of you'll ever probably put on your back, but that's because it only has like a five minute run time and it's made out of drone parts. but I need to fly because I've never put together a flying machine that more people have, fl have flown than I have. So let's go fly. This 
horrible, miserable, cold Ohio day, we're off. Oh no, it appears my drone motor is falling off in one of my ducks. Time to land. All right, I had to make a slight emergency landing. The beautiful thing about redundancy is when you lose one, you have more, like having multiple kids. When one gets hit by a bus, you have multiples, like this. See, look, one of my children, they fell off. See, I could have kept cheese in it, but I'm like, I wanna save these components, but oh boy. So that was an interesting flight, probably the shortest. I really want to go a bit longer, but some of the screws came out. I definitely Loctite of that one, but uh, I guess the Loctite wasn't that good. We wanted a little bit more shots here, but we didn't quite get them. I made this crappy follow cam in like five minutes. It needs some adjustment because whoa, 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 whoa. But other than that, it was pretty cool. I think I'm going to set this thing aside now, and I'm going to build a real electric power motor later with higher quality components. It was a pretty crazy experience just flying this thing around because I've never really made a flying machine paramotor style thing. And uh, it was kind of a bit of a learning experience, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. It worked. You can fly on 50 drone motors. Oh yeah, you're probably wondering about the ducks. Well, this is a very good case of putting the cart before the horse. Here's why. I printed the duck, then I realized I made a mistake. The propeller gap is too large. Luckily, someone had really good eyes on Instagram and mentioned that. Too bad I'm not gonna do anything about it because I really already printed a bunch of the ducks and I figured, we'll just go ahead and roll with it. I mean, I want them mostly for the protection, but I should actually put them on the scale. Here's what I found out. Without the propeller in the ducts, it was actually a little bit more efficient and made a little bit more thrust. This is awful. <laughs> Typically, this is really a case of not having the prop clearance close to the wall, which is generally what you want with ducts, but because this is such a sketchy thing, it moves around a little bit. So I didn't want to make them too tight, but I really should have made them a bit tighter. <laughs> Oh, I should also mention, this is probably the worst electric vehicle there possibly is. In comparison, electric bikes are much more efficient and get you much further for watts per mile. This is the Hemiway E Fat Tire Bike. It's got a huge electric motor, 750 watts, a big lithium battery, and it goes for miles and miles and miles. But unfortunately, I can't ride the bike everywhere and I have to rely on my internal combustion vehicle car to get me from place to place. That's why I'm happy to partner with Ren for this video. REN is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and then offset it by funding products that help plant trees, protect rainforests, and suck carbon from the sky. By filling out a simple questionnaire about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. Like, I personally live in a tiny house because that doesn't produce a whole lot of carbon. It's also because I'm cheap and I don't want to spend a lot of money. But unfortunately, not everyone can make their carbon footprint zero due to external circumstances and because combustion engines are still better than battery technology right now, all the battery technology is definitely improving day by day. However, if you want to make a difference now, you can help make the plant a little bit more sustainable by donating to Ren and offsetting the carbon that you physically can't offset. Once you've signed up to make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint, you can receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection, and carbon removal projects you support. You get to see the trees you've planted and what your money is spent on. It'll take a lot to make the plant more sustainable in the future, and you can learn more by going to Ren.co. For the first 100 people that sign up, 10 extra trees will be planted in your name. Head down, check out the link below, and plant some trees, because we all need a little bit of air to breathe.